you can see, all these models are we're done with Createx. You know, military models, flat jobs, camo, you know, shiny. Uh, you got iridescence. You got pearls. You've got metallics. Um, you kind of these cars here um, kind of show a range of, of, of effects and things. They're very versatile paint, uh, I will say that, because they offer so many different types of paint. And I'm talking about Createx, not Auto Air. Um, same company, same, basically, essentially, uh, very similar. Um, but I'm doing this because these are the paints when you go into Hobby Lobby you'll see them in there and it's like wow those are some cool colors or oh, they'd be awesome on a model they're supposed to be pre-thinned they're easy to get um, there's a wide range and it's very tempting uh, especially to maybe newer modelers or guys that are new to airbrushing you know it's very tempting to just you know be in Hobby Lobby and grab a few bottles of these paints and say oh man you know, your imagination goes wild because of the colors, the graphics you could do. You know, they have transparency, solids, metallics, pearls, iridescence. I mean, a little bit of everything. And, and a lot of colors that are very much geared to uh, car modeling. And, uh, but obviously can be used just as effectively for military models. But, uh, I'll dispel one myth real quickly. They are not easy paints to use um, when it comes to solid surface painting. But, uh, you know, you see these things like this is uh, a pearl lime green, just a cool color. That's what's on this model here. You know, you've got a pearl plum, which was used back here on that model, and then a blue iridescent. I don't know if you can see the, the blue. It, it may not show in this video, but there's, you know, ghost flames. So, I mean, the, the, the potential is there. This is an iridescent color. It looks when you spray this color, it looks like ink, you know, from a blue ballpoint pen. How it has that sheen that's kind of goes between blue and purple. Uh, here's another color, which is a pineapple pearl, which I used on another model, which I'm not showing. But um, so the potential is there. The potential is there to use these colors, but they can be a real heartbreaker. Um, if you don't know uh, the chemistry of them and how to thin them and uh, the pitfalls that are involved in these paints um, which I'm going to try to make a more concise video get to the point and um, and take it step by step um, and along the way dispel myths and and really give good solid information to anybody that wants to try these Createx paints especially on plastic models or any solid surface uh, what to look out for uh, some of the things that must do things and must know and I'm gonna commence with doing this bad man or excuse me uh, Street Fighter I'm gonna do the Street Fighter model and I'm gonna do some graphics on it and all kind of stuff and I'm using that model simply because it's a very large canvas so there's lots of room to to do masking and, and, and different panels and, and possibly flames or, or whatever graphics so that'll be like the test bed to show this it's going to take me a lot of time to put this all together and make it concise but um, I think it'll be well worth it because I still do get a lot of questions about these paints and you know, Dr. Cranky, you know, has mentioned that, uh, you know, has sent people my way when they're asking about some of these acrylics and Createx and Auto Air and stuff, which I am familiar with Auto Air as well. I've, I've, I've got some of those too and have used them a little bit different. But I want to do this strictly about Createx paints, you know, the actual Createx airbrush colors because that's the stuff that you find very easily in your hobby or craft stores um, it blows away the um, your apple barrel and you know craft paints you know um, those paints uh, the pigment is way too thick um, to really be effective and give a good finish I'm not saying they can't be sprayed I mean sure they can and, and be used in certain instances but when it comes to spraying a whole body and things like that, 
they are you want to really you know if you're trying to work really hard using those paints you might save some money but you're going to work really hard to get anything like this you know with those paints it's simply because the pigment is so thick it's designed for brushing it's not designed for airbrushing and there's nothing you can do to that paint to make it airbrush friendly I mean sure enough you can spray peanut butter through an airbrush if you thin it enough but you know these are probably the closest thing you're going to get to airbrush paint that's cheap and I guess you could say in the craft realm that's going to give you these type of results.